Hello everyone. I am Vikas Vijendra, a solutions engineer at Kong. And I'm Apenda, um, a software engineer on the Insomnia team. And today in this session, we are going to be uh, showing you how Kong can help accelerate software quality and velocity with spec-based API development. As you know, most say softwares uh, or applications today are API driven and hence spec-based API development is really important. And all organizations with software development lifecycle uh, want to improve quality and velocity. Optimizing your development workflow around APIs has proven an important part of achieving this outcome. So in this session, we are going to not only uh, take you through an overview, but also show you a demo of how you can do that with Insomnia and Kong together. Before we go into the demo, um, I would like to set some context and then share our experience or point of view of what an API development end-to-end -end life cycle would look like. At Kong, we have been working with a number of customers uh, to look at what are the key life cycle stages. But more importantly, I think there's one unique thing that we have recognized learning from our customers, which is automation is the first class citizen as part of the life cycle. So if you look at the different life cycle stages here, as it builds out, uh, there are three primary categories. So if I bring your attention to the screen here um, in the middle, so that's where you start with designing an API, uh, adding your tests, then um, managing them, and then um, say productionizing it onto the gateway. Say so all of those are um, say key first steps. But at the same time, you can have a team of uh, people or developers working on your APIs. Say one of um, a key uh, steps would be to mock an API uh, because what that allows you is to not having to build an implementation and then make that API available to your consumer. So that's where mocking comes in uh, and then you add in other things that are important for API management, like securing your API and protecting your backend APIs. Once you have all of that done, then we move on to the uh, left-hand part, which is about consumption. So consumption of APIs could be a web application developer or a mobile app developer, or it could be just a third-party API consumer. So any of them then can go on to developer portal to consume those APIs seamlessly. And keeping in mind, all at, as all part of all of these stages, uh, you may or may not have an active API implementation built out. And that's where your software development lifecycle should be very consistent with making the implementation um, go hand in hand with what is exposed by the gateway. So as part of this session, We'll not touch upon all of these life cycle stages, however, focus on just a few of them. So if you look at it, the highlighted ones are what you're gonna so, uh, see, and automation is something that we'll also uh, come back and summarize on as part of the demo. So without further ado, let's try to drill down further into what this workflow looks like. Um, and before I do that, I want to also call out uh, another key point, which is primarily uh, customers and based on, again, uh, the feedback that we have got from customers is there are two uh, main approaches to how you do, um, say, API development and how you go through a developer workflow. The primary one uh, has been code-driven approach or an ad hoc approach, which is you start building your, um, say, APIs or softwares and then worry about the specification later on. I think that is great. However, uh, as you start scaling, as you have more and more developers coming on, um, what we see is it may not scale as well. And that's where spec-based API development comes in, uh, which gives you both velocity and uh, an ability to have uh, a focus on software quality. So another key point here is what we have taken as part of the workflow uh, with Kong would be to work on one single source of truth. And that really comes down to an open API specification, as you can see on the screen. 
So let me call upon um, Opender to give his perspective as an engineer on what this workflow would look like. Thanks, Vikas. So as an engineer, uh, I'll start with, uh, with an open API specification um, with an Insomnia designer. Um, and Insomnia designer will then help me to write the mocks and unit tests against the routes and the configuration in that specification. And that enables the API developers and the UI developers to, um, to build those aspects in parallel with the specification and the mocks and tests all going into um, a Git repository. And then again, the code can also exist within Git and be piped into an automation and CI CD pipeline. Now, as part of the CI CD, you would also want to validate the API that's been built um, against the tests that were written within designer at the start. Um, so to enable this, we created um, a companion CLI called INSO uh, that allows you to run the Insomnia designer unit tests within a CI environment. Sticking with the theme of the open API spec being the source of truth, um, we can also configure Kong through that. And INSO will generate declarative configuration for Kong, um, including any routes and upstreams and plugins, uh, and feed that into an automation pipeline, which can then be published out to the Kong gateway or to the developer portal. That's great. So let's move into the demo, shall we? Yeah, for sure. So uh, what we'll do is demonstrate some parts of that workflow. Um, I will assume the role of an API engineer who's laying out the groundwork for a pizza ordering API. Uh, first, we'll start with uh, designing the specification and unit tests within designer, and then we'll move on to see how Kong can help accelerate the, the API development process, and then briefly touch on how we can automate that in a CI environment using INSO. Exciting. Cool, so what I have here is, um, is a document within Insomnia Designer, an open API 3 specification for my API. And currently this uh, has an upstream and it has just one path, which is to return all orders, to fetch all the orders. So Insomnia will automatically uh, ingest this, this uh, specification that I've got, and it will generate all of the requests for me to make queries against, um, against my configured servers. So if I hit send here, um, we can see that we receive some data back from the API. We can now uh, write some unit tests against that. So jumping to the testing tab, uh, what I've got here is a, is a simple test uh, written that um, hits that request that we just saw. Um, it makes sure that we receive a 200 back and it's a valid response. And it ensures that I receive some number of orders. So I can run that test and we see that it's passed and that's great. So now what I want to do um, is add a new route, for instance. So I'll collapse this one. And here's one that I prepared earlier, which is uh, to get the active order, which is just a get method. So once again, designer will automatically generate the request for me against that, against that new endpoint. Um, and because I haven't actually uh, implemented the backend for that, I've just got a, a blank, um, blank path there. I just get an empty response back. Now, again, I can write a test for this as well, um, just to make sure that I receive a valid response. So I've got one written here. And right now it just checks that, again, I received 200 back. And testing that, we see that it passes. So what we've done there is just the first aspect of uh, introducing a new specification and introducing unit tests within designer. Next up, um, because I don't actually have, I haven't actually implemented the API yet, and it might be more complex than simply returning a single order. Uh, what, I, what I can do is um, consume one of the plugins within Kong uh, for mocking. So to enable that, I simply just uncomment that, uh, which is just adding a, a plugin directive within that route that I created. 
um, to say that to tell Kong to return a mocked result. Looking at the config that's been generated, the declarative configuration, we can see that under the new path that we created, that the mocking plugin has been enabled for Kong. So at this point, what we can do is I'll jump into the terminal um, and we can run a command for inso, um, which is the companion CLI to generate the configuration for that API. So what we see here, this is the same configuration that we just saw within the application, but through a, uh, through a command line. I can take that and I can pipe that response into DIC, which will update Kong for me, uh, which will update my local instance of Kong. And we see that the mocking plugin has been enabled for the route that we created. So at this point, we can jump back into designer and go to the debug tab. And for that same request again, if I make a request against my local environment, we see that we receive, we get some data back now. And looking at the headers, uh, we can see that Kong has actually responded to that, even though I haven't actually made any changes to my API. And now that we've got some data, uh, some valid data coming back, we can expand on our unit test that we wrote and make sure that when we're loading the active order, uh, we receive, make sure that we receive one order and that order has the expected properties on it. And again, if I run that test, we see that it passes. That was quick, isn't it? That's nice. So would, would we be able to add any Kong plugin in this manner? Mm, yeah, we can. So the, the X Kong plugin directives uh, support anything. Um, but that can also extend to the fact that uh, we can also smartly apply some plugins. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to add some authentication into, my, into the new route that I added, I can make use of security schemes, which is a part of the open API spec. So I'll add a new security scheme uh, for API key. And that will, do, that will say that I am expecting an API key to exist in the header for the request. And then so I can enable that against the route. Yeah, that's so cool. Looks like it's already set up where developers can start using this in an enterprise manner. Mm, nice. Yeah. Mm. So what so, I've done here is I've just enabled um, the API key uh, security scheme against that new route. And looking at the config that's generated for Kong again, uh, we see that the key auth plugin has now been enabled um, against that new route. So we can go ahead and update Kong for the same way we did before. And we see that the key auth plugin has now been created against that route. Jumping back into designer and going to the request. Again, designer because it, it will ingest the specification because I added a key auth header um, as part of the specification, it's automatically added the header for me here. Um, what I did previously was added or generated an API key uh, against my local Kong environment, which we can send and we see that it's sending fine. Now let's say that I remove that key and I don't send it. Um, I receive a 401 unauthorized back. And if, if someone has made any changes that uh, like inadvertently removing the API key, for instance, the unit testing will pick it up because now this test has now failed because uh, I expected to receive 200 back, uh, but I received 401. That looks too easy for me. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm curious. So you've, you've uh, been able to apply plugins and policies right within open API specification onto Kong, right? So can we mm -hmm. verify this on Kong, please? Yeah, for sure. So what I've got here is that same API that I created with, with my upstream. Um, we can see the responses that we've made recently, uh, the requests that we made recently, and the two routes, so all orders and active order. And again, against the active order, we see that we've got two plugins enabled the same way that we enabled them through the specification. That's wonderful. That's, that's really modern API management in a declarative manner. Mm, for sure. Cool. So that concludes the second part, which is um, 
effectively helping you to accelerate the API development process because what I've done is enabled uh, authentication and enabled mocking without actually touching my API, my API implementation itself. And lastly, let's jump into the automation step of how we can automate uh, much of this process. So you'll notice that this document um, and all of the unit tests have actually, I've actually got it synchronized into Git. Um, so if I jump into that Git, uh, Git repository, uh, I have a workflow enabled here and I'll just step through the actual steps of the workflow and we will make this um, repository available as a template and, a, and an example to use. But Looking through the steps here, it's simply doing a validation of the specification, so running linting. Um, it's deploying that specification to the dev, to the Kong developer portal. It's deploying my upstream, so my backend API, however much of it that I've got implemented. Um, it's generating the declarative config and updating Kong. And then it's running unit tests against that entire configuration. So this is the entire, the same workflow that we ran locally. Uh, but running in a CI environment. So if a developer, when they're introducing an API or introducing a change to the backend, was to inadvertently make um, any sort of unexpected changes, um, this, this GitHub or this uh, CI workflow can detect that and fail any of the steps and prevent a merge um, into your main branches. Oh, that's cool as well. I'm curious uh, and have another question here. Um, so it says uh, deploy to dev portal. So what is it doing there? And can you show me uh, what comes up on dev portal when it does that? Mm, yes. So it's actually uh, publishing that to the um, to the developer the, catalog? the API catalog, the yep. API catalog in Kong. Um, we oh, can see I that see there's it. two here yeah. and also our pizza or pizza API um, with our two routes. So anyone that has access to this can now go and consume it from here. Nice. Thank you. Cool. Um, so let's recap. Um, so we, we went through the design steps, which was uh, writing the open API spec and introducing unit tests within designer and then accelerating the development process by um, enabling and configuring plugins through the specification for Kong um, and then automating that that whole process with the CI/CD workflow. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Open there for that great demo there. So if I want to summarize everything that we saw so far in the demo, it really comes down to uh, what as Kong, we see the combined value of Insomnia and Kong together. And when you use both together with the tooling that we have provided with integrations, what do you, get is higher quality and velocity with your software development. Also, uh, as part of the lifecycle stages, if I want to review what we just did, um, and from our point of view, what an, uh, a seamless API development lifecycle would look like is you start with the design to quickly build and collaborate uh, based on specifications, which is open API spec today. Um, you quickly add mocks to your API so you don't have to worry about uh, building out implementations, which then makes it available directly on dev portal with the tooling that there is to publish to dev portal. So the key thing there would be as soon as, as an API with a mock is on the portal, uh, it's already discoverable and then ready for anyone to reuse, which is what you'd like to do uh, when working as a team rather than building out new APIs. And once you do that, the development team, which is the API implementer, uh, can either work in parallel or can work after the spec has been reviewed to start building on the implementation. And then the rest of it is the consumption side of things, uh, which you can make it happen through dev portal. Um, and finally, um, as you can see, automation is always a first class citizen because you can start automating using either INSO or any of the other CLI tools that we have uh, right from day one. So that's basically um, the key takeaways from this session. Awesome. And um, lastly, I'd just like to mention that while Designer itself is still fairly new, 
Um, it does build on top of uh, Insomnia Core, which is a hugely popular um, REST and GraphQL API client. Um, Core and Designer, they both have a shared code base, which means there's shared improvements and any contributions and plugins that the community creates, they, they're used, they're used uh, across both applications. Um, it also builds on top of the strong Kong and Insomnia open source communities. And there's a, a really um, quick feedback loop that we take into account when we're building out new features and experimenting with new, with new aspects of the program. Um, designers seen a lot of uh, a, a lot of awesome adoption of over the last couple of months since we've released it, um, and there's been a lot of feedback that we've already taken in. Cool, and um, with that, that's a wrap. So, thank you all for attending this one, and we can now take questions.